right, you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Blah, 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 blah. Sounded like I really mumbled then. Maybe it's because I've I've had a few I've had a few hits of the joint. But look, guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be the third one in a series of videos covering weed and sports. It's a topic I'm interested in. I have uh, experimented with weed uh, a lot over the last 10 years. It is my guest drug of choice. Uh, I don't really drink, I definitely don't smoke cigarettes, and I am very, very active. I love sports, I love training, and marijuana I've, I've managed to, I guess, uh, intertwine with that. And it seems a lot of other people have too. Now, today's video is called Using Weed to Save Football. Chasing Strains, Part 1. I think it's a series by Vice Sports, and this one must be about using weed medicinally for football players. In a previous video we saw you know a little segment about a guy David Irving and I believe he was suspended from the NFL for using weed. His explanation for it um, was because he, he'd rather use weed than all of the painkillers that he was prescribed which is I believe that's definitely a reason to um, to stop testing for weed in the NFL. I don't definitely not college football but in the NFL professional sports you know, you know the rigorous routine that they have, games, trainings, all that stuff. I think that uh, I think that if you stopped testing for weed in the NFL, I believe all it would do is decrease the amount of painkillers that were handed out, and it wouldn't increase the profile of weed in the NFL at all. Because I I still believe that most players would, would want to keep it quiet and pr they'd probably just smoke in their own time or vape or eat or whatever they need to do to control their pain. Like I mentioned in the last video, the only people that it would affect negatively would be the pharmaceutical companies. That's the only people it would affect negatively. It is what it is. In today's video, I'm, I'm hoping we get a little glimpse into what could be the future, which is weed in football as a painkiller. So, in the same fashion we've done in the last two videos, I'm going to take a couple of hits off of a, a joint here that I've rolled, and um, you can too if you like. And let's continue this, this journey down a rabbit hole, which is what I do sometimes on YouTube. And let's find out how weed may be saving football. Let's go. This is Jack Herrera, I buy it in bulk. And uh, it's as simple as this. Kyle Turley. I've seen a special on him. He was a fullback, was he? What this does for me is give me clarity. As soon as I put this in my system, the picture becomes clear. The chemical disruption that's been caused from playing the game of football does not allow me to have clarity. Wow, so he's saying that basically he has CTE and that smoking weed actually improves the symptoms of it. I would have thought the absolute opposite, I'm not going to lie, but that's very interesting. Let's continue. And that's it. At the end of the day, this is resolving things that, well, Butrin couldn't, Depakote couldn't, Zoloft couldn't, Vicodin couldn't, Flexerol couldn't, Ambien couldn't, and you're talking seven pills. Between this and these seven medications that I was taking daily, is that this had hopelessness, and this is complete hope. Shit. Take your handshake. Well, imagine feeling like imagine feeling like you needed painkillers. Everyone gets a prescription, everyone, not just NFL players, man, it, it, the general public, if they get addicted to painkillers, Oxycontin, whatever, it's because they get a prescription for pain for like four weeks or six weeks. Not being warned properly about the addictive properties to this drug, and then at the end of their six week, you know, cycle of it, when they're meant to come off, they can't, and they continue. I guess it's just, that, that's, I don't know, do, do doctors need to educate their patients more or is it just gonna happen? You put these people on a six week course of this drug, a side effect of it is that you're gonna be addicted and that there's gonna be withdrawal and that it's not gonna be easy to get off. 
Fuck that. Fuck even starting that. I'd much rather have a smoke of a joint. God damn. In football, injuries occur, serious injuries occur, that put you on the operating table, and you're never the same. My first major injury was blowing out my knee, completely dislocating my knee, my left knee in college, uh, during practice and spring drills. The pharmaceuticals were introduced, and so the painkillers and all those things, the anti-inflammatories, those things became frequent and constant uh, because they were so readily available. I then went to the NFL, the injuries kept coming on, uh, more surgeries, more injuries, more medicines, to where at the end of the day, these things just kept building, uh, and they would manifest in these extreme blow-up situations where all the pain, all the frustration, uh, anger would just erupt. He wasn't a fullback, he was left tackle. <laughs> yeah, CTE. When he went into the NFL, um, there started to be changes. And um, after the concussions, uh, I couldn't even talk to him. We didn't do anything. We didn't go anywhere. We didn't interact with. Fuck! I thought she was me. I thought she was talking about the NFL having changes. She was talking about this guy having changes in himself. Let's listen to that again. It changes. Damn, that's. That's when he went into the NFL, um, there started to be changes. And um, after the concussions, uh, I couldn't even talk to him. We didn't do anything. We didn't go anywhere. We didn't interact with anyone. And when we did, it was always Kyle in the corner and me uncomfortable and me making excuses for Kyle. Oh, well, he doesn't feel good. Oh, were he this? Oh, he... Sorry, he's just a dick. He knew that he was more apt to rage, or it would overtake him to where he just, he couldn't handle situations. The violence, the rage, all those things kept getting bigger. Participating in football, you need it. You have to have it. If you don't have that, then you're done. You're not going to succeed. And that's what I had. Uh, unfortunately, I, I couldn't come off the field and leave it at the job. He would break a table or a chair, or lamps. Oh, Jesus, I will not buy an a lamp that's cost more than 20 bucks for a long time because it's going at some point it's gonna go i know i'm a skip <laughs> that's fucking that's like working with my clients at my workplace you don't want to buy anything too expensive because you know eventually <laughs> eventually it's it's definitely going to get smashed and that's that's someone who can't genuinely cannot control their temper this guy's not intellectually disabled he's a normal guy so why is he acting like this yeah Gary person when that switch hits and so very intimidating and uh, again breaking of, of furniture and throwing things um, uh, and being very loud and uh, scary. And that's when he's on all these pain pills. After my football career I found myself unconscious on a floor at a venue watching a show one night with my wife. Oh it was terrifying. He was perfectly fine. It was a relaxing night. We were just kind of sitting there listening to some live music. He leaned over and put his head on my shoulder and I'm like, huh, you know, it's like he was going to sleep. Didn't get up and I'm like, come on, Kyle. you know, Kyle just laid over and passed out and slid down to the ground. I instantly hollered at the bartender to call an ambulance, had no clue what was going on. And it what was, was about, it? about two minutes later, he kind of woke up and came to. And I find myself waking up on the floor in a bar and I then go into a vertigo spin and that wouldn't end and ultimately had a seizure and was hospitalized for three days. And that then spawned the discussion of what happened to my brain. Fuck. It's very apparent that there's something wrong here. You know, this big blurred mass was alarming everyone and so they started to, well, you got a bad brain injury. Hmm. Bloody interesting subject from the outside. I'm very interested in CTE and examining ex-NFL players' brains and the symptoms that come with CTE. And they may not be physical, they may be actually just mental. It's basically, it's, it's early onset of, of Alzheimer's and you, it changes the way you think, changes your moods, changes who you are. It's extremely interesting, but what I was going to say is imagine being in it. I've seen interviews with, with, with uh, recently retired NFL players who've, you know, become aware of all this new technology and 
and the new term CTE and, 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 and what they have found in ex-NFL players' brains, uh, you know, certain players having committed suicide because of these symptoms just of depression and anxiety and your brain just changes, it doesn't work properly. I've seen recently retired NFL players, even you know ones who are getting into their 50s and early 60s even, they're scared, they're genuinely scared for the future and for what may come. And I guess it's, it's a certain amount of it is going to be genetics, just like boxing. You know, you can have two boxers, both take just as much damage throughout a career, and one will develop these symptoms and, and you know, go suicidal randomly and have random violent outbursts randomly and start distancing them away from people and their families and things. And you'll have another person who is fine. Severe CTE, they, then you've got the speech that slurs and the memory goes and you know it's basically a version of Alzheimer's isn't it? But yeah, like I was saying, very interesting from the outside but it kind of does make me sick uh, you know thinking about it and, and seeing big collisions and big head knocks even in boxing and in football it makes me cringe because I, I do think about these kind of things and I, I can't help it really. But it's the love for the game and a lot of these guys in the NFL would say well it's worth it. Isn't there something about Olympic athletes they must have surveyed and most said well like I don't know what it was 80% or something 90% maybe said that uh, if you could have a gold medal I don't know if it was would you take 10 years off of your life or, or if it was would you die at 30 but I think they were like 25 years old and they got asked if I gave if you if you if you could be given a gold medal at an Olympic Games, would you die at 30? That seems early. Or would you take, t would you give 10 years of your life expectancy? And like they all said yes. So obviously at the top, at the top level of sport, I think I'm competitive. See, the only thing you can do is compare people to yourself and how competitive you were and how much drive you had. I was pretty bloody competitive as a kid, but I don't know if I, if I would ever have, you know, given up life for a gold medal. That seems pretty, I don't know, pretty serious. Anyways, let's continue. Just trying to think, what, what are all these drugs that I've taken since 1996? Well, butrin. Yeah, so that's the first thing that I thought when he had that episode in the club and fainted and had a seizure and he's got this mass on his brain. I mean, yeah, it could be because of the concussions. But it could just as easily be because of all these pills he's been taking. Vicodin, Flexerol, Depakote, Zoloft, Zomas, Percocets, Viox, what the fuck? Morphine, Tordol. What the hell? Just this right here, that's about two hits. And that's all you need that deals with anxiety, depression light sensitivity that all of those other ones were trying to address. Interesting. I moved back from Tennessee to California because I knew there was something with marijuana. I knew that cannabis had an answer. Was this the answer that uh, I was looking for to fix all my issues? I didn't believe that that was the case, but I was hoping so. I went up to Northern California and got some seeds and uh, planted them and they're uh, taken off. I think another factor we have to remember is, okay, this guy, you know, he hasn't smoked weed his whole life, has he? And he's literally just using it medicinally. If, I think if you smoke, the worrying factor is, is, is for someone who starts smoking regularly, whether it's for medicinal reasons or not, but their brain has not fully developed. Anyone under the age of, honestly, like, 25 who start smoking regularly you are putting yourself at risk of, of permanent brain damage I, I believe or, or it's definitely going to change change your brain it may not negatively affect that it might positively affect the way that your brain develops then I started to find these strains that when I used that I was better I had the best night's sleep I'd had in about six months or so my energy was back my motivation was back this was the strain that actually helped me get off the pills. When I found the San Fernando Valley strain, uh, I immediately knew that I could use this to get off of those. 
I realized I can wean myself off with using this strain. You know, I got off of one pill down to two. And the further I got away from those, the, the more I realized how much more cannabis could do for me. So, okay, so... We have just seen... He's going to the park. Okay, so he's going to the park. He's, he's having fun with his family, with, with other people, with the public. And that goes back to... You know, he's obviously changed a lot because his wife was saying how at, you know, gatherings beforehand, when he was suffering from all these symptoms, he'd be in the corner by himself and she'd have to make all these excuses for him. But we're about to see how he... Uh, interacts with people now. So let's see. After a, after a few hits, like what did he say? That's why I got this weed out, right? That is what he needs instead of all of those pills. Look at that. Ain't much, is it? But over here in Alice Springs, it still costs a lot. So let's let's finish off this video. It's probably taken about 20 minutes, and uh, the video is only seven minutes and 46 seconds long. Once again, I apologise, but for those who actually enjoy hearing me speak. This is for you. Unbelievable changes in him. Uh, I can now talk to him. He's kind and loving once again. Creates empathy, definitely. You're more more aware of other people and their feelings. You're more acutely aware of that, and, and that's, I guess, a sense. It's, see, it raises all of your senses. It raises your, your um, intensifies it, you know? Touch, taste, sight. And it also intensifies that sixth sense, which is an intuition for, for someone else's thoughts or someone else's, you know, whether you can see through things, you know, it, 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 there is something going on there, I believe, yeah. He's like the old Kyle, and I never would have believed it unless I had seen it myself. So now I'm an advocate for, for cannabis. Hey, Will. Get ready, Dean. He's a big bubbly teddy bear and he's kind to everyone and engaging. I can imagine bro, I know how I feel when I've had a smoke, right? So to be out there with your kids, play, like you love sport, sport goes back to your childhood, right? When I have a smoke, all I want to do is play sport. All I want to do is go down the field and kick a ball or, or go to the basketball court and have some hoops, you know? So when my kids are old enough and they're playing Little League, for me to go down there, have my sunglasses on, no one can see my eyes, have a little smoke beforehand, get out there and just enjoy yourself. It is, it brings you back, makes you high, you know, as long as you don't take it too far and you don't abuse it. If he is literally having a little nugget like that, a couple of hits, which will probably last him hours, that is not overdosing and that is the way it should be used and it just makes me happy. It makes me happy seeing him standing out there because I know how, I, how, how I'd feel. You do, you feel good. It takes away anxiety. It takes away. Uh, I guess if you've got an if you've got an an obsessive brain or an you know an anxious brain, and he clearly did. That's why he couldn't engage with anyone because he was probably just sitting there, just going over and over in his head, you know, unable to be present in the moment. And I think we may have uh, may have done that for him. But yeah, uh, it's just cool. And once again, I've I've just spoken for another sixty seconds, and I'll always be myself on this channel. It's one thing you'll always get from me. ...with everyone, and, and, and finally now we've got a connection back to where he, he wants to be a part of people's lives. He wants to help people. He wants to hear your stories. He wants to see how he can help your kid who's, who's going to play football and talk to you about the concussions and the, the dangers, where that part of his life was shut off for so long. I don't know how many guys I've talked down from the ledge ex-NFL players that have called me grown men crying. It's dementia, you know, this this is what it is. Yes. Early onset signs of dementia, that's what it is, man. These guys can't, they don't know what's happened mentally. Their brain's changing. It must be frustrating as hell. Alright, so it looks as though we've got two part, oh no. Oh, part three as well. Okay, so it looks like there's two more parts to this. Honestly, I don't have the time. Um, I just wish this guy all the best, and I probably will if I continue, you know, following football, following medicinal marijuana in football. I'll most probably hear and see of this guy again. So, uh, with all that being said, it's about time to finish off this video. 
and continue with the next one, which is going to be... In the next video, we're going to watch Stephen A and Max having a heated debate over marijuana in the NBA. Following that, whatever they say, we're actually going to go to another video, which is called, I think, 85% of the league smoked. And it's former NBA players sitting around uh, talking about smoking weed in the league. And so what we're going to do, we're going to go to the journalists first, see what they have to say, and then we're going to go back to the actual NBA players and see what it was actually like. All right? Everybody, I hope you've had a fantastic day. I hope you have a fantastic Christmas. Today's date is the 24th of December, 2019. And, um, well, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, everybody. I've been, I've been working till the morning, yeah. Morning. Yeah, they've been sleeping now, I swear they storming, yeah. They storming. Yeah, and I swear I'm cooking like a foreman, like foreman. Uh, and my foreman jumping like it's Jordan like on my it's way. Boom, boom, tell them I'm my lane, I've been praying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. gotta say this thing, I'm the same. 